For a while now, my GitLab self-hosted server has been suggesting that I turn on Auto DevOps for my projects. GitLab has this feature called Auto DevOps, which is a collection of pre-configured features and integrations that can help you build, test, and deploy your applications automatically. I've been putting this off for a while, mainly because one, I knew it might take some setup to get it up and running, and two, I already have an existing workflow with GitLab CI and Agro CD for building and deploying my personal projects. But I recently decided to take some time and give Auto DevOps a try. And I must say, I was amazed at how straightforward and easy it was to get started. And this is exactly what we're going to be covering in this video. I'm going to show you how I was able to enable GitLab Auto DevOps for one of my projects and also cover some of the key things that you need to keep in mind when getting started. So the first thing obviously I needed to do was to enable it. I simply clicked the enable in settings button that appeared at the top of the project and this brought me directly to the project CICD settings. And all I had to do to get started was to check the default to auto devops pipeline option and save the changes. Keep in mind that the auto devops pipeline will only run if you do not already have an existing GitLab CI file in your project. And immediately back at the project's homepage I could see that a pipeline had kicked off with build and test stages already underway. This worked out of the box for me because I had a docker file already in my project as I tend to do with all of my projects. This means that the build stage had auto detected a docker file in my project and had already started building the image. Other important things like the registry configuration had also been taken care of automatically. So with no additional configuration other than just having a docker file in the project and enabling the auto devops pipeline, the build job had passed and I had an actual container image stored in GitLab's container registry. Now, of course, it's important to make sure that your GitLab server has all the required components for this to be able to work for you as well. For example, your GitLab server will need to have been deployed with GitLab runners and GitLab registry components. Checking back on the pipeline, the test stage was also flying. The code quality, container scanning, secret detection, and static application security test jobs had all passed. So all the test jobs except for one had all passed, which was not all that bad, and I was sure I could fix it. You can find all the information about all the pipeline stages, including the details of the tests being run in the Auto DevOps documentation. So it turns out that the failing test job runs the appropriate tests for your application using Heroku build bugs. And since I had obviously not configured my project for that, this job was currently failing. But that's okay, because uh, I do not need to do any testing for this project anyway, so I might as well skip this step for now. Auto DevOps CICD variables provide some vital configuration options for the pipeline, including on how to skip specific stages or jobs. All I needed to do was to set the test disabled variable to true in my project CICD settings to disable this test job. And once I did that, I had a passing pipeline. Okay, so now all that is left to do is to deploy the application to Kubernetes. On the project's main page, you should see a add Kubernetes cluster button. Clicking on it opens up the Kubernetes cluster settings under the project's operate tab. To add a cluster, create an empty file under here with the name of your Kubernetes cluster. This file can also be used to define paths in the project containing Kubernetes manifests that are then auto-deployed. But we will not do that because what we want to do is to deploy our application using a default auto DevOps pipeline Helm chart. More on this Helm chart later. So once you create this file, you can refresh the page and connect to the new cluster. This provides a Helm command to deploy the auto DevOps Kubernetes agent to your cluster. This agent, once installed, will help deploy applications to the cluster. And once I had the agent running and successfully connected to the cluster, I made a new commit to the project. And this time, the Auto DevOps pipeline enabled two more stages, one production and the other browser performance. Now, of course, as I had already suspected, the production stage failed. I knew I would definitely have to configure some extra things here, like cluster permissions, for example. And sure enough, I could also see permission-related errors in the jobs logs. And once again, you can find everything you need to successfully configure this stage under the build and deployment variable section in the Auto DevOps documentation. So I started by setting the cube config and cube context variables. And as I alluded to earlier, the production job uses Helm to deploy the application as a Helm release. 
And in order to do this, it uses a default wrapper helm chart that is provided by GitLab, which we can customize based on how we want our application to be deployed. So I needed again to set variables like kube ns, replicas, kube ingress best domain, and the helm release name. These variables will define to which namespace I want to deploy my application, how many pod replicas to deploy, a domain name for the ingress if applicable, and the name of the Helm release. And for many of the more advanced options that you cannot customize using variables, you can add them to the auto deploy values file, which is auto loaded into the Helm install command. And so after a few iterations of updating the settings and running the pipeline, I managed to get the settings just right and the production stage succeeded and so too did the browser performance stage. And so using GitLab Auto DevOps, I managed to successfully build and push an application image into GitLab's container registry and deploy a Helm release of the application to my Kubernetes cluster. This definitely streamlines my code to cluster workflow, and I'm definitely going to adopt this for a lot of my personal projects. So if you want to try this out as well, be sure to read the auto DevOps documentation for more configuration options. Note too that your GitLab server version might have some key differences that might need some extra consideration, like deprecations, for example. These might change how the DevOps pipeline is configured. I am particularly curious on how exactly it works with Flux CD since they now recommend using it instead of the pool based deployment. And also, can it work with my existing Argo CD deployment? So, definitely a lot more testing and customization can still be done after this. For now, though, thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.